So we're going to look um, at more at array iterations using loops to go through arrays. Uh, but sometimes uh, getting into the Java is kind of confusing right away. And it's nice to understand the algorithm, the method we use for doing certain things. So we're going to do that first. 7.3 is going to walk us through some drills of array iteration. where we're not going to look at the code. We're just going to uh, walk through the algorithm, the method first. And then we're going to go to 7.4, which is going to walk us through the code. So 7.3 is kind of fun. It's just a set of participation activities to walk you through uh, and limit to in some ways. The first one, you want to find the maximum value in an array. Uh, you only get to look at one element of the array at a time. So I'm resetting this activity so I can show you how it works. So I'm start, I only get to see this. And then if I go next value, it'll show me each value through the array. And my job is to know what's the largest value. So when we're done, what's the largest value if I only see one at a time? And I can store one value as I'm going through. And so I'm going to keep storing the largest value so far in this stored value. So again, go through this. Um, go through next val uh, start. So again, 62, that's the largest I've seen so far, so I'm going to store it here. I'm going to go through, now, I, every time I'm going to compare, if this number that I see is bigger than this number, I'm going to store it. So 69 is bigger than 62, I'm going to store that value, and then go on to the next one. 54 is less than that, it's not the biggest one, so I don't have to worry about that. 34 is not the biggest one, 7 is not the biggest one, 45 is not the biggest one. 74, that's a big one. That's biggest than any I've seen so far, so I'm going to store that. And again, um, I've gone through and found the, the largest number. And so my time is 32 seconds. So see if you can go through this, do the same thing, and see if you can beat to get a faster time than that also. Um, now another thing we might want to do is uh, look at the number, uh, count the number of things. Like here we're going to count the number of negative values. So similar thing, you can only see one value at a time. You can loop through this. And then you're supposed to count how many negative numbers as you go through this. And so we can increment our counter here. So I'm going to reset this. Um, and start. So that's one. That's a negative number. That's not a negative. Oh, that's a negative number. Increment that. That's another negative uh, number. That's not a negative number. I'm not going to increment it. That is. I'm going to increment it. That is. I'm going to increment it. So I ended up with five numbers. And that's the right. That's correct. And so it'll randomly do this. It'll be different every time. So go through this and see if you can do this. But it kind of shows you this algorithm going one by one and using some counter or some value max or something like that that we keep track of. Now the last thing we'll look at is array sorting. Uh, we'll get more into sorting later on in the more advanced courses. But this shows you the beginning uh, ideas. So you're looking at two numbers, and again, we want to sort with the larger uh, values on the left. Uh, I mean, the largest value should be over here uh, at the end. So these two are in order, smallest to largest, so we don't. Well, that's fine. So again, we're going to go through this, and we can go through this again and again, but we want to swap some values. So I'm going to reset this, start this. So 1 is less than 65, 65, 89, those are in order. Uh, 89, 76, these should be swapped, so I'm going to swap these two values around and go on the next. 89 and 9, I'm going to swap these. Uh, and go on to the next 89 and 32, swap those. Go on to the next 89 and 14, swap those. So now <coughs> 89 ends up to be at the end. So if I go through this all once, I don't have the whole array sorted. I just have the largest value at the far right. Uh, but again, I can repeat this process and do some sorting. And again, later on, you'll look at ways of actually sorting arrays and things like that. So this just walks you through uh, this process uh, of the algorithms. Now let's look at some of this code for how this works in 7.4. So again, we'll be using this code a lot. We'll declare an array, and we'll have some uh, number of elements in the array that we'll have. Often it'll be a constant or some other value like that. will be number of elements in an array. And so we'll have our loop, and this is going to be so here's our first code uh, looking at our loops here. Like I said, uh, we have a for loop. We start with the index 0, because again, the index in array is 0. We said i, or whatever our loop counter is, in this case i, uh, is less than the number of elements in the array. Because again, if you have a, an array of 10 elements, they'll be numbered 0 through 9. So we want less than 10. And we increment it, and then we do something in the body of our loop. So this will be a standard loop process. And, uh, eventually, you'll see they actually have pre-built loops for this sort of stuff uh, for different types of arrays or more advanced things. Sometimes you see the, the book talks about vectors or array lists. Uh, as you go further on to programming, you'll learn more advanced and uh, 
versions of these called vectors or array lists or and other ones. But we're, for now, we're just focusing on these nice, uh, relatively simple, uh, straightforward applications of an array. So here's our first element. So walk through this, see if you can understand it. We declare a constant for the number of elements in our array. We then declare our array of integers being that number of elements, and we call that user values. And then we're looping through it. And again, here's our this loop and this loop are exactly the same. They just set i equal to 0, and then i is set to 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to, in this case, 7, the number of elements in the array. And so we'll do this loop. We'll go through these statements seven times. And each time, the first time through, i will be 0, and we'll work with user value 0, and then i will be 1, then 2, then 3. And similar here, uh, we're doing this again and again. Now here we're trying to find the max value. And remember from the previous thing, as we're looping through the array, here we had the user enter a bunch of numbers, seven numbers. And now we're going to have to find the max value. So we're going to loop through this uh, seven times. So each time through the loop. And each time through, we're going to check if the, um, the user value is greater than the max value. We're going to start max value as 0. If you remember, let's just go back uh, really quick to how that worked on uh, 7.3. So here we're going to find the maximum value. We start this off, and right away we're going to always store 23. is always going to be the largest so far because that's the only one we've seen. So we're always going to store that first version. And then we're going to check, is 48 greater than the stored value? And if so, we're going to store that in here. And then go to the next value. Is 69 greater than 48? If so, we're going to store it. And we're going to keep uh, storing values. And then some of them we won't store. 42 is not greater than 85. We won't store this. Okay, so that's the algorithm we're trying to do here <coughs> um, with this. So right away, we're going to have this max value, and we're going to store the zeroth element in the array into that. And then we're going to go for i equals 0, i less the number of elements, and we're going to check if the next element in the array is greater than the max value, we're going to store that element in the array in the max value. So again, we're going to look at the, the first element, uh, or uh, element uh, 1, and we're going to say is user value sub 1 greater than the max value? And if it was, then we're going to say max value is now equal to that new fund. And now then we'll increment i to 2, and then we'll check if user value sub 2 is greater than the max value. Now it might not be. This, that, that element might, might be relatively small, and th so we may not store that in here. And we'll keep looping through here. Uh, and setting this up. <coughs> so it, by the end, max value will be the largest value in the array, and then we can print out the max value is that. So uh, so this this will go through and w work you through this and show you the examples. And they show a couple of examples here, uh, one with positive and negative values, and this one is all negative values, and they set that all up. So they walk you through this code. Here's another array iteration one, so, or some more questions. Uh, here we're assuming the number of uh, elements in our array is n size, so that's our constant holding that. So try to work through these examples of looping through these. We use this sort of, uh, a lot of these similar algorithms frequently, uh, with arrays where we use this for loop like this and we loop through and then and we do something in between count them count the ones that satisfy some values find the largest or the smallest or things like that so one thing we do have to watch out is this common error is we're trying to access an array out of bounds if array of eight values and we say it, uh, if array v has eight values and we say v sub eight that's illegal because the values are zero through seven so every once in a while you get an array out of uh, array index out of bounds error and that means that you maybe um, the array index is negative or it's too large and stuff like that so like here's an example we're trying to say we have an array weights it has three values so out in memory here's weights and here's their three values and we're trying to say weights one weights two weights three weights uh, three uh, and this is going to give us an array uh, exception, array index out of bounds exception uh, here, because again, there isn't a three. Uh, there's three values, but they're index 0, 1, 2. So the index is out of bounds. Um, 
So here's another example you can watch that sums up the values of the array. And again, we ask the user to enter the values in the array, and then we sum them up. And again, it's similar to what we saw in the previous examples. You might want to jump back to that previous example where we're summing up the values. Uh, well, actually, we didn't. We didn't do the sum. We did something else. But again, this is a similar feature where we're trying to sum up these values. Uh, so go through these different uh, examples uh, of arrays uh, and uh, see if you can understand how they work and the challenge activities uh, are a good way to reinforce what you've seen so far. Um, it takes a while to get used to arrays and loops and they're difficult at first but if you keep working on it you can understand that you'll start seeing this repetitive pattern with this uh, a loop and this index and then you'll start seeing this as a unit where we're just going through each element of the array and doing this for each element of the array. But you've got to keep trying, you have to keep looking through example after example of this to, to kind of get it to sink into your brain. So keep working on these, good luck.